free thought, the use of reason rather than faith, tradition, or authority, to form opinions on religion. More wars have been waged, more people killed in the name of religion than by any other institutional force in human history. So with such wildly contrasting beliefs in this country, why aren't we at each other's throats? Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Here's why. It's our Constitution and its very core of freedom from religion. Our country was founded in part by refugees seeking freedom, seeking to escape centuries of religious persecutions, holy inquisitions, witch hunts. The United States of America was the first nation where our founders did not claim a pipeline to a divinity. It was a revolutionary act that they created a secular and entirely godless constitution whose only references to religion are exclusionary, uh, that there should be no religious test for public office. The founders were aware of the inquisitions and the pogroms and the religious wars and the terrors in Europe and the persecution in many of the individual colonies, and they wanted no part of that in our new government. So they erected what Thomas Jefferson called a wall of separation between church and state, and that protects all of us. It has prevented the bloodshed and warfare that we see in so many parts of the world where religion is involved in government. The church worked hard at it, night and day, for nine centuries, and imprisoned, tortured, hanged, and burned whole hordes and armies of witches, and washed the world clean with their foul blood. Then it was discovered there was no such thing as witches, and never had been. One doesn't know whether to laugh or cry. Once government gets behind religion, then whose religion? Somebody is going to get persecuted, somebody is turned in the, into the insider, and someone becomes the outsider based on their personal religious convictions or lack of religious convictions. And our founders wanted no part of religion in government because they knew it was divisive. There are some believers who don't see the difference between neutrality and hostility. They think efforts of groups like ours to keep the government neutral are actually a hostile act against their faith. When we are not asking for the government to be pro-atheistic either, if the government stays neutral, the government stays secular, then uh, everybody's an insider, nobody's an outsider. Freedom from religion is what we all value so highly. Privately, I can believe or disbelieve whatever I want. There's always been this notion in our culture that, uh, 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 you know, that religiosity is somehow equated with morality. Of course, that's false. I think people just aren't aware of the fact that actually atheists and agnostics and secular humanists are underrepresented in our nation's prisons. They're less than half a percent. And uh, in the, the states in the United States that have the highest percentage of non-religious people actually have the lowest violent crime rates, the lowest murder rates, the lowest poverty rates, and the countries around the world, especially the democracies that have the highest de degrees of secular people, are also doing the best. When you think about social and moral progress, it's usually made by rebellious people, people who break the mold, people who are rejecting the dogma. Most progress is made by people who are free thinkers to some degree. They are challenging the status quo. Uh, the abolition of slavery was led by people who were either religious liberals or, or religious heretics. In fact, during the 1800s, the word infidel was a synonym for abolitionist. So you can name all sorts of progress made through history by people who tend to be either very liberal or, or free-thinking individuals. Otherwise, how is progress going to be made? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. It's brilliant. There's a reason it's the First Amendment.
Well, some of the myths you hear is that if you don't believe in God, you must be nihilistic and sad and depressed and suicidal because you have no purpose or meaning in your life. And in fact, most of us non-believers think it's the other way around. If you're afraid of hell or judgment or that you're not going to go to heaven, that can be tremendously upsetting to a lot of people, especially children. Most of us atheists are happy that there's no purpose of life because if there were a purpose of life, that would cheapen life. We would be secondary. We would be servants or slaves, like the Bible says, uh, to submit. And if you look at the postures of prayer, the head is bowed, you're kneeled down, the hands are shackled together before the slave master. But the fact that there's no purpose of life, which is good, it's really good news, doesn't mean there's no purpose in life. And most of us atheists and agnostics find immense purpose in solving problems like hunger, inequality, oppression, disease. There's immense purpose and meaning in life that, that millions of good, happy, productive, and moral atheists have found as they live their daily lives.